In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Hello everybody, thank you for saying yes, I'm going to keep Sunday holy, and it is the third Sunday of Advent. What's different? We got rose on. We're we wearing pink. You ask any priest, most priests will be like, it's not pink. But the singer pink, that's a singer, right? Or a yes. band? Yes. She, she is a that's her name? I just apparently is a big fan of Mrs. Pink. Mrs. Pink should be getting ready for Christmas because how many days away is Christmas? Ten. No, not, not with the time that they see this. It won't be ten days. It's a week away. Right? It's a week away. It's eight days, really, right? Yeah, next week is Christmas Eve, but it's also the last Sunday of Advent. So time is getting short, so now is the time to get ready. So let's call to mind our sins, let's ask Jesus for his mercy, and come back to him with all our hearts. If you didn't do well, like we talked about a couple weeks ago, in the first or second quarter, this is the third quarter. Let's make it a great one. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God. I rejoice heartily in the Lord, in my God is the joy of my soul, for he has clothed me with a robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice, like a bridegroom adorned with a diadem like a bride bedecked with her jewels, as the earth brings forth its plants and a garden makes its growth spring up, so will the Lord God make justice and praise spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to my God. My soul rejoices in my God. My soul rejoices in my God. My soul pro proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. My soul rejoices in my God. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. My soul rejoices in my God. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy. My, my soul rejoices in my God. God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice always, pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterances. Test everything. Retain what is good. Refrain from every kind of evil. May the God of peace make you perfectly holy, and may you entirely, spirit, soul, and body, be preserved blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will also accomplish it. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. With A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. 
A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask, Who are you? He admitted and did not deny it, but admitted, I am not the Christ. So they asked him, What are you then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you so that we can answer, so we can give an answer to those who sent us? What do you have to say for yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert, make straight the way of the Lord, as Isaiah the prophet said. Some Pharisees were also sent. They asked him, Why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ or Elijah or the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but there is one among you whom you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Do one of these little uh, name that refrains. All right, I'm just going to start with a song, and the refrain comes, you fill it in. The landlord say your rent is late. He may have to litigate. Don't worry. Don't do it. Be happy. <laughs> Maybe he means apps on the phone. You should be happy, and you should hit those apps. That's what he meant back there in the 1980s. Be happy. The Play Store. What, what, the Apple Store? The iStore? What do you guys call it? Apple Store. Jess, like Eve, she's all about the Apple. <laughs> she's all Apple. I'm not. I, I like Windows. Android. Right. So does that song, whenever you're like you're down and you put on the song, Don't Worry, Be Happy, does that make you happy? Sure. Doesn't make me happy. No, it makes you think of vacation. Makes you think of vacation? Yeah. Do you know the song we're talking about here? Don't worry. Don't do it. Don't do it. You'll bring yourself down. Like the second reading here says, Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. And I bring up that song because that song is saying, be happy. Just because someone tells you to rejoice doesn't mean you're going to feel better. Just because they tell you. What's that? You might. Diane, be happy. <laughs> okay. So she laughed. It maybe works. Just be happy now. <laughs> be happy. It would be awesome if you could just go around and make people happy. Right? That would be great. It doesn't work like that. However, what St. Paul is catching is really helpful for this time of year, right? So this time of year, ever since around Thanksgiving, what happens? People get a lot more stressed. There's a lot of people that get depressed and get sad this time of year for many reasons, right? Some of those reasons are super obvious. Around, at least here in America, of course, around Thanksgiving, but the end of November, families come together. And so if families have problems and have brokenness and dysfunction, and every family has problems and brokenness and dysfunction. Does Father Day's family have that? Yes. yes. Every family does. And so when families get together, you can't avoid those things, or you try to maybe in unhealthy ways, right? And so people get sad. And then all of us have lost loved ones. There's people in our online mass community who are in heaven seeing us, but we can't see them anymore, right? The people have lost spouses relationships have broken down kids have passed away right horrifically like terrible things have happened people have said goodbye to loved ones or ha didn't have the opportunity to say goodbye lives were taken and people get really sad this time of year and then there's just people that are just like sad saps you know people who just always want to bring up something negative always bringing up bad memories always bringing up hurts you could be happy having a great time with your friends and then there's someone there who's like bringing up when they were injured in the past or things went awful and they're you're like, really? Like Eeyore. Eeyore? That's the guy, right? Eeyore from uh, Winnie the Pooh, right? But he always brings up the poo and not the Winnie, right? Like, leave the poo behind you, right? It comes out the behind, leave it behind you. But there's always people like that, right? So should the sad people, should the downers, should they, like, monopolize Christmas? Should they take over this whole time? Not at all. And that's part of God's will, is that we be happy and we rejoice. So, like, when someone cuts you off in traffic, is that time... <laughs> This is great. That person just cut me off. Thanks a lot. Should we do that? Should we roll down the window? It says, in, in all circumstances, give thanks. Hey, thanks, buddy. Thank you. I'm really grateful that you cut me off. <laughs> Should we do that? Do you want to do that? Sometimes. 
You're number one. No. <laughs> well, of course, we're thankful for what? We're thankful for our faith. We're thankful that God came. And what Jesus is trying, what St. Paul is saying is the act of giving thanks, of intentionally calling to mind your blessings, is a way to combat, well, human sadness, pain, discomfort, the, the, well, the trials of, going, of carrying our cross every day, right? Of, of making it, making it in the world today takes everything you got, right? It's tough. And so one of the ways that we can prepare for Christmas because the ultimate blessing in the world was Christmas. God has given himself. He has nothing better or finer than his own self. And so he sends his only begotten son to save us, to come into this world, to let us know, hey, you're not alone. The jerks don't win. It's going to end really good. Yeah, it's going to be like an adventure and it's going to be trials and it's going to be tough at times, but it ends with resurrection and eternal life and no more pain or sorrow or goodbyes. Right? That is the best blessing. And what the Holy Spirit is saying, like, test everything, retain what is good, refrain from evil, that one of the best ways to prepare for Christmas, and when Christmas comes, is to remember the blessings that you've been given, because every single blessing points forward. Practically, what does that mean, Father Dave? Right, so let's say, let's say, um, let's say I'm married, who did, who did I marry? Let's say I married some celebrity, who did I marry? Jennifer Aniston. Jennifer Aniston. Diane brought that up, I didn't bring that up. From my mom. My mom doesn't like when I talk about Jennifer Aniston, very attractive actress. God bless her. Right? So let's say I married her and she passed away. Would I be sad at Christmas? I'd have to call my friend Courtney Cox to see how she's doing, or my other friends, right? <laughs> Would I be sad? Yes, I'd be terribly sad. And the temptation to be gloomy, to like, I don't know, eat too much chocolate, to like stay shut up in my house and snap at people just like Mr. Scrooge would be a temptation that would come to me. And Scrooge is left all alone as a young boy on Christmas. His family doesn't bring him back. Do you remember that? Right? And he's sad by that. And so the temptation would be for me to be the same way. And the Bible, Jesus knows that. And he's come to, to give hope. He's come to tie up, uh, somewhere it said in here, my eyes aren't working right now, to tie up wounds, to bind up wounds. Right? And so how do you do that? How do you combat that with the Bible saying? One of the best ways, the pink way, right? The, the rose way, the, the joyful way is to like remember good times with your spouse. Well, they make me sad because I don't have them now. Well, hold on. Don't, don't neglect what you had in the past. Be grateful for it, right? So be like me remembering, you know, the time that Jennifer, you know, Jennifer got the Star Wars Return of the Jedi outfit. Who knows, right? Some of you know what I'm talking about. Right? You would remember good times with your husband and wife, and what would they do at Christmas? That's what I, how I try to tell people. So you're sad on Christmas Eve that they're not there? Okay. Well, you can combat that by giving thanks. Not that they're not there, but for the times that they were there in the past. And then start to remember, what did they do? What was your first Christmas? What was your first Christmas like with Pete? Uh, we were very poor. You were very poor. Yeah. They had a little tree. And uh, not too many presents. Not too but many it presents. Was okay. It was okay. But did you, who cooked? Did you cook at all? Did you have no, any? No, we went to his parents' you house. You went to his parents' house. You were happy to leave? No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right, but you remember those. You, you could be sad or you can be happy. And how you, like, part of putting your, like, faith requires action. So how you put your faith into action is in all circumstances give thanks. Hey, God, thanks that I had so many years with my wife, or with my parents, or with my mom, my dad, my pop, my grandfather, my kid, right? Whoever you're missing. And so if you, you know, if you find that hard to start or hard practice, well then between now and next week, maybe every single day, think of seven experiences, things, or people to be thankful for and start to practice it so that when Christmas comes, you're already ready to give thanks, right? So tonight, you know, you could say, hey God, thanks for the coffee. Do you like coffee? Do you like coffee? Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Do you like tea? I like tea. Did you have tea today? Uh, I will later. You will later. Will you give thanks? Uh, you will now. I will now. Right? Like, hey, thanks that I can read. Thanks that I have clean socks. Thanks that I have a house or that I have the internet. Right? There's so many things you can give thanks for, and you start to make that a practice. And then that practice bears fruit. And the little, and the little joy of Christmas will change you. 
right? And that's the whole story of Mr. Scrooge, that if you can touch Christmas and all the grace that God gives you from then, it can turn this sad miser, you know, who is saddened by, well, loss and loneliness and, and become selfish and greedy, can change him into a man of great generosity and the ghost of Christmas present, right? So in all situations, give thanks. Start making that a practice and let that change you. And don't worry, you'll be happy on Christmas. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let's raise our prayers to Almighty God. That the Holy Spirit may amplify the church's life of prayer without ceasing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God may make peace and justice spring up before all nations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord may look with mercy upon all who are imprisoned, moving them to repentance and freedom in him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that God may make us holy in spirit, soul, and body as we prepare to celebrate Christ's birth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That all who have died believing in the saving power of God may be with Christ forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For peace in the world, especially in the Holy Land, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For help for those that are in mourning, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And now for those petitions we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for those who are suffering from cancer, especially uh, in our online community, and for those who care for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray for the souls of any one of our online parishioners who have passed away this past year, if they're in purgatory, may God show them mercy and bring them to heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, turn toward us and hear the prayers you inspire us to ask. We ask them in faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplished for us in your saving work through Christ our Lord.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he might find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and dark angels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and David our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. With the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, St. Mark and St. Nicholas, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts through Christ our Lord. Uh, just an announcement. Will we have Mass next week? Yes. Yes, we will have an online Mass for you next week because next week is the fourth Sunday of Advent. And then the evening of the fourth Sunday of Advent, it's going to gracefully or magically switch over to be Christmas Eve. Uh, on that Sunday, will we have a Christmas Mass for you? Yes, we will. Yes, we will have two of them. You might hear a river, the glowing deer, the glowing Christmas reindeer next week. Probably will, knowing Father Dave, as opposed to hearing uh, two different homilies for that and Christmas. But you'll have to tune in to find out. And um, why was this color St. Therese's favorite color? Why is that sure? Because she sends roses from heaven? She does, but that's not that's her fault. Why. That's not why. Because Jesus. Because no, Jesus rose. Because <laughs> Jesus rose. Diane is like. Because ah. Jesus rose. And that's good news for all of us. We'll see you next week. Thanks, everybody, for the thumbs up and the prayers and the reviews. Uh, and care for my brother, too. Um, he's fighting a good fight. Right? That's what he's doing right now. So uh, thanks for all of that. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God bless you, everybody out there. Christ is coming. The good news is going to arrive, right, Craigie? <laughs>